Okay, before I start, uh, I would like to know a little bit about the, the sociometry of the group so that I can adjust my comments to the group because I'm here to service you and not here to give a conference. I'm here to help you understand the person of Moreno, the person of Moreno during his time and the influence that he could have today in 2018. So I would like to know to start who are uh, people studying or working in the field of psychodrama just to have a sense of okay people who would define more about be, the, their profession being around uh, poetry literature anyone who okay hello <laughs> hello okay um, about finance <laughs> <laughs> I know, okay. Psychoanalysis, right? Okay. Who else is here in terms of how you would define yourself in terms of your main ident professional identity? I'm a philosopher. Philosopher, good. Okay. So we'll have trouble because I, you may want to question me, which is okay. Anyone else who didn't raise their hand? I'm working at the Department of Socioeconomics. Good, social economics. Okay. Uh, my background is, is in economics, but I was trained in economics, but I consider myself a social scientist. And I work with concept from sociology and psychology and other uh, social sciences. Good. Okay, anyone else who wanted to just say a word about your professional identity? Okay, so if at one point you feel that you have a question, a comment, or if you find that it's too boring, you could leave the room, or you could raise your hands and just ask questions, because I really wish that we take this opportunity tonight to communicate and to uh, be able to share some of our experience as it relates to um, uh, the uh, heritage of Moreno. So I will start by reading a little text. Might be boring, but at least it will bring uh, some context as to why it is important in 2018 to celebrate the diamond. Uh, being an historian, it's always in interesting to have some markers to say, oh, 50 years ago, 25 years ago, 200 years ago, something happened but it makes sense only if we can bring it back to today. What did we learn from this historical defining moment? So my little introduction, I think, will probably tr all throw you into the context of 2018. Then we will walk back 100 years to 1918. I wonder, I, I could probably forget about this one. I think this one is also working, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so I'll put my glass on and... Um, so it's to put what we're doing in context. Um, so Moreno often made reference to the 21st century claiming that although his idea might be premature for the 20th century, the next century would belong to him. He was mainly th thinking that the 20th century belonged to Freud, the 21st century would belong to Moreno. So far, we see no evidence of this. On the contrary, from a global perspective, we witness a worldwide position rooted in self-centered values, individualism, collective narcissism, a disquieted, disquieting return to narrow nationalism. Moreno envisioned a totally integrated world in which science and religion would contribute in their own way to bring humanity to a better and more tolerant place. 
there were two Morenos, the religious man, and we'll talk about him later, and the scientific figure. They did not develop at the same time, the religious preceding the man of science. Roughly, we can trace back the deep religious belief of Moreno to the European period and the man of science to the American period before and after 1925. However, in reality, the development of Moreno philosophy is more complex. Moreno was eventually able to claim that his view were better than those of the traditional religious system or classical scientists. It makes sense because he thought that he was God. Marx, and it's a quotation from him, Marx was wrong thinking that science alone would be sufficient. But religious leaders are equally out of touch with reality if they believe that religion can survive without the contribution of science. If Moreno is right, we need to know how to define religion and science, and more importantly, how to integrate both in his own system. But for now, let's come back to the actual world situation. The world is well immersed in the 21st century, and it is quite scary. Moreno contribution and legacy might be of help. But before going back to Moreno view, in light of the 100th anniversary of the creation of the magazine Diamond, let me reflect on what is happening now on our planet. When I wrote this, I am now sitting at my desk and let my brain free associate with my personal and social experiences of the last 75 years. I was born during World War II, and I know firsthand what my parents went through during those years. They lived the cycle of a despicable conflict and the aftermath of reconstruction. Even though the family lived thousands of miles from the battlefield, the experience for us was nevertheless traumatic. The conflict was predictable since the armistice of 1918, who we will celebrate 100 years on November 11, left half of the world victorious and arrogant, the other half depressed and humiliated. Revenge was already in the making. I also lived through the Korean War, the Cold War, the Vietnam War, Civil War in Africa and South America, now Syria, Iraq, Afghanistan. I went through economic depression and warfare, students' revolution and confrontation, and score of daily conflicts and natural disaster. There have been moments of hope and sunshine but on the whole, I must say that humanity has not learned much from personal and international conflicts. The never again of the First World War has remained an empty slogan. Today, the old planet is at risk, to say the least. Not in the same way that it was during the war, the World War conflict of 19. 1914-18 or 1939-45, and 45, but in a more subtle and insidious way. Looking at the geopolitical state of the planet, I can only observe the chaotic situation on every continent. Major international conflict has not found a peaceful resolution. Political rivalry and power struggle between major countries take different road and faces, but are alive and threatening. Let's think about USA, China, Russia, European Union, and all the controversial and unorthodox alliance. North Korea, Middle East, uh, power like Syria, Iran, Saudi Arabia, Israel, to name a few. 
The Jewish-Palestinian relationship continues to create a constant instability in the Middle East, instability compounded by sectarian and religious conflicts inside and between surrounding states. African countries still endure abuse economically and are left behind. Religion has emerged in the last few decades as a reason or excuse for confrontation, and with it, major terrorist incident or threat. No country or part of the world is spared. People take risks every time they travel or even walk in a public square. But let's be clear, behind this horrible and despicable act, they are leaders that are looking for power and control of naive fellow, but also millions of true believers who are legitim legitimately questioning our lifestyle. Looking through the lens of economy, the only word that so many rich people or political leaders seem to know is wealth and money. But the ordinary person can observe the following situation. Wealth is concentration in the end of a few, and even the middle class cannot survive in a world where money is seen by many as the only viable road to happiness. In the last century, capitalism, now recycled into wild neoliberalism, was integrated in the language of democracy and freedom. Wealth, extreme wealth, is seen as a sign of progress, happiness, and success. Who remain sensitive to poverty, to the abuse on working children and poor country working class? Who dare to stand up and denounce the pillage of natural or human resources that take place in poor and emergent country? It is relatively easy to denounce people or nation lack of equity and justice. It is much more difficult and demanding to act according to a set of value based on equal sharing and opportunity. Violence and anger are part of our daily existence. We see it in self-inflicted wound or suicide Witness it with couple, family, community, or at the international level. And because it is so easy to act it out, we now live in a constant state of hostility and aggression. The child is exposed on a daily basis to brutal ways of solving conflict and learns early to play games on the computer where conflict are solved through bloodshed and murder. In some countries, especially in the USA, the access and possession of firearms is seen as a right and as a way to defend oneself in the old day of the, in the Far West prior to the existence of a lawful and organized society. There are less and less limit to the capability of a few citizens to massacre a whole community. The race for owning nuclear weapon is more alive than ever. The advance in technology has created all new ways to relate to each other. Virtuality and reality are now concepts that blur together and confuse relationship. Social media are places to express and share a self-experience without leaving a place and a time for reflection or criticism. The veracity of news is now suspect, the distinction between reality and fakes being difficult to assess. Technology become a powerful for humankind, and it is easy to observe that the way it is being used depends on the intrinsic motivation of the user. The technological revolution offers great potentiality if developed in a vision of real democracy and fairness. But it's dangerous in the hands of self-centered narcissistic people and regime. Every day we witness horror story of intimidation, cruelty and lie performed at the highest level of government and transmitted 
on and by the web. Adverse force are at work and it is difficult to assess what the future will be. And beyond the immediate interaction between people and nation, there is the future of the planet. We now know how our behavior contribute to the destruction of the environment. Our abuse of oil and gas, surproduction of chemical fertilizer, destruction of natural forests, construction of oversized ship, the transport of inflammable material leading to ecological disaster, the displacement of millions of refugees now living in confined area. Those are all choices putting our environment at, is at risk by destroying a necessary equilibrium for survival. At stake, a brighter future of our environment, most of the time hindered in the name of speedy economic gain or refusal to invest in technology aimed at saving our planet. We are so far behind, behind that even our modest progress is not sufficient to stop the degradation of the environment through, for example, climate change. I could continue to underline basic problems that we now face. Intimidation, lack of sexual equality, loss of respect for minority of all sort, prevailing of impulsive behavior from narcissistic personality, re-emergence of self-centered community or state, religious, political, or economic, economical bigotry. That just envision for a moment these million and million of people prisoner in a refugee camp and whose horizon do not go beyond a kilometer away from their temporary shelter. And for them, some of the temporary shelter have lasted for 60 years. Let's imagine how it may feel to have no hope for the future or to entertain a minimal dream of just eating once a day or enjoying a glass of water. Let's just look at our world realistically. If we only roll reverse with the reality just described, we may start to get a sense of the danger facing all of us. Naturally, I'm now painting a bleak or grim picture of our world, but this is reality and it is imperative to look at the entire scene, the world stage, and be sensitive to the experience of the past in order to construct the future. There is still great hope if we make a proper diagnosis and choose to act upon it. There is still hope if every citizen of good faith continue to fight for equality and justice. I can only imagine that my thought process resembles the one of the young Moreno and score of young Viennese when they created the diamond 100 years ago. We are now in 1918, the world's awake from a long and cruel war, an apparent peace settlement has been reached, and the victorious country have reestablished new frontier to suit their national deed or interest. Never again is the slogan transmitted to the young generation while citizens enter into les années folles, a way to forget the atrocity and injustice suffered by millions of innocent people, children and adults alike. The First World War didn't start in 1914. Already the outcome of the War of 1871 was the cradle for the next major conflicts to come, as the Armistice of 1918 would be directly linked to the Second World War. And in between the two wars, 1871 and 1914, major community and nation conflict arose. Score of refugees, economic crisis, millions of people living in poverty and revolution in the making, communism in particular. Then the First World War and its process. At the end, they were in appearance
seeing the House of Encounter was a temporary place so that refugee would not be refugee forever. We know that a lot of people, millions of people, have been born as refugee and die as refugee. What do we do about that? Well, Moreno opened a house, a very small house, and he said, welcome to everyone, we will provide you a shelter. And what is a shelter? Well, a shelter is a safe place. People who come in a shelter have to feel that they are safe, that if they go there, they will not be run over by the police or by agent of a government, that they come in this house and they will be safe to prepare for a next step. What is a shelter? Well, a shelter is a place where people who work in the shelter are not thinking first about themselves, but they're thinking about helping other people around. So that these people who come, often with no paper, no money, sometime coming in family where the family is broken and they cannot find even their children, that their people need to rely on people who will be there for them. This is what a hundred years ago, at the time of the creation of the diamond, the young Moreno, but also with four other friends, one from the, the philosophy department, three other from the medical school, they got together and did something. Well, now I can start getting away a little bit from my text and um, talk a little bit about Moreno philosophy in relation to the House of Encounter. So what I will ask you, it's to imagine that we're not in 2018. Does that work? Yes. Yeah, okay. So we're not in 2018, we are 100 years ago. And you may, at this particular moment, chose a role. If you think that you're in 1918, what would you do in life? Would you be studying? Would you be working? Would you be in Vienna? Would you be elsewhere? So take the time to imagine if you would have lived in 1918, your whereabout, your philosophy of life, what is important for you. And as you do that, I will temporarily enter Moreno role, and then we will have other people entering the role, uh, and say a few words about one of his book that was very controversial, and it's still a little bit today, called The Word of the Father, where he put himself into the role of God. And I will talk a little bit more about it. But let's imagine that you're in Vienna, walking in the ninth district or second district, and you meet this young man. At that time, he was about 28, 29. He had this green mantle that was typical for him of Austrian people living in the mountain. And everyone else was, you know, just walking in regular clothes. He kept this cloth even during the summer. You know, I think it, gave, it, it kept him not to be too much overweight at that time. But he kept this long green coat and he would walk around and address people. And, um, what was important for him was that ultimately his philosophy of God, that he would call the religion of encounter, would become the cornerstone of his work. And this book about the, the word of the Father was published in the Diamond. So let me just read a little bit from it, and then uh, I think we have other people who will enter Moreno role and sit in the the reason why I want Moreno to sit here, it's because three years after, in 1921, when Austria was a young republic and there was a lot of infighting 
between group, communism, Nazi people. Uh, students, university has to be close at one moment because group were fighting against each other. Moreno one night rented a theater called the Comedian House and he had a throne on the stage. There were about a thousand people in the audience. Moreno was uh, uh, then dressed as a jester, like, you know, le fou du roi, a rigoletto. And uh, he invited people from the audience to sit on this throne and tell the audience how they would see the future of Austria. So I kind of mixed two scenes by using this, because this happened in 1921. But I imagine that if Moreno would sit in this chair, what he would have said would have been this. But I forgot my glass. I think <laughs> <laughs> then I would have to invent, and I don't want to. I want to be faithful to what he said. So when he would meet people in the street and talk to them, he would welcome them to say, you know, who are you? And very often, this is a real thing, he would say, I'm God, the Father, the Creator of the universe. These are my words, the word of the Father. How can one thing create another thing unless the other thing create the one thing? How can a first thing create a second thing unless the second thing also create the first? How can a father beget a son unless the son also beget his father? The, rest, the first created the last and the end created the beginning. I created the world, therefore must, I must have created myself. And now, let's invite um, other Morenos. You want to come? And they will take other part of the word of the Father, but in German. And you all, you're still in 1918. I want to remember that. So, hello, Moreno. Hello. Nice to meet you. Yes, yeah? nice meeting yeah. you, too. Yeah. So, you like to walk in the street in Vienna. Yes, of yeah. course. And there is all these people that you may want to, to share your philosophy with. Yes. Yeah. So, I invite, you to, to. I invite you to do so. Thank you for the invitation. Oh, schau, Vater, schau, dass ich dir noch begegne. Doch wenn ich dir schon nicht begegnen soll, so schau, Vater, schau dass dir mein Weib begegnet. Doch wenn dir schon mein Weib nicht begegnen soll, so schau, Vater, schau, dass dir mein Kind begegnet. Doch wenn dir schon mein Kind nicht begegnen soll, so schau, Vater, schau, dass dir mein Eidam begegnet. Doch wenn dir schon mein Eidam nicht begegnen soll, so schau, Vater, schau, dass dir mein Herz lieber Freund begegnet. Doch wenn dir schon mein Herz, lieber Freund, nicht begegnen soll, so schau, Vater, schau, dass dir meine Herz allerliebste begegnet. Doch wenn dir schon meine Herz allerliebste nicht begegnen soll, so schau, Vater, schau, dass dir meine Magd begegnet. Doch wenn dir schon meine Magd nicht begegnen soll, so schau, Vater, schau, dass dir mein Hund begegnet. Another Moreno. Another Moreno, yeah. Well, for, for Moreno philosophy, in some way we are all ourselves, but we are all Moreno. So welcome. So, um, yeah. The second Moreno. The yeah. Third Moreno. Yeah. So do you, when you look at these people, what goes through your mind? So very, very beautiful people. Yeah. And I'm mm -hmm. very glad to meet these people and to stay here on this, uh, in this room and to tell you about my philosophy. Yeah, but you know some of them are communists, some of them are Nazi, some mm. of them are existentialists, mm. some of them are Buddhist, mm. some of them are Catholic. So you're ready to share your philosophy with all these groups? Yes, so okay. everyone is welcome. Good, let's do it. Doch wenn dir schon mein Hund nicht begegnen soll, 
So schau, Vater, schau, dass dir mein Hengst begegnet. Doch wenn dir schon mein Hengst nicht begegnen soll, so schau, Vater, schau, dass dir mein Lamm begegnet. Doch wenn dir schon mein Lamm nicht begegnen soll, so schau, Vater, schau, dass dir mein Täubchen begegnet. Doch wenn dir schon mein Täubchen nicht begegnen soll, so schau, Vater, schau, dass dir mein Grab begegnet. Doch wenn dir schon mein Grab nicht begegnen soll, so schau, Vater, schau, dass dir der Mond begegnet. Thank you. Any comment from the crowd as you hear that, what goes through your mind spontaneously? And you could say it in German. If, it's, if I don't understand it, it's okay. It's, it's um, yes. You also remind me of the poem of the introduction to the order of things. This very, in the first instance, very weird connection of so many different things. And in a way, there is uh -huh. Very strong, very mm -hmm. logic to Okay, thank you. Someone else? Yes. Confusion. Confusion, right. Okay. Any other comments for all this group from 1918? <laughs> Compulsion. Compulsion. Uh, defense. defense. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Any it's, other it's comment? Cosmic. What? Because it's cosmic because it ends with the moon, the grave and the moon. Uh huh. So it goes up. Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, in fact, if there is any other comment, don't hesitate to stop me also. Uh, in fact, this uh, book is part of a greater uh, book and booklets that Moreno wrote. And Moreno says, I have an idefix. Idefix makes sense in German. I had this idea that, you know, that you... Fixe idee. What? Fixe idee. Yeah, fix, yeah, fixe idee, yeah. So I had this idea about the, the, the world and this idea is that first, in order for people to be able to get beyond conflicts, beyond problem, we have to learn to encounter each other. This is why he called that the religion of encounter. And what did he mean by encounter? It has nothing to do with, you know, traditional faith or religion. It has to do with the fact of what he wrote in a poem. I will take my eyes out and put you in the socket of your eyes. You take your eyes out and you put it in the socket of my eyes so that I can see the world through your experience and you can see the world through my experience. Only then, says Moreno, there will be true encounter. So encounter is not empathy, it's one way beyond that. It's really getting into someone place. Like if today, if we get into the shoes, we, we meet a refugee and we become the refugee. And we may have been, a, a refugee may have been walking and going through hell for months. And then we take the place of this person to see where this person come from who this person is. But I may be reluctant to accept refugees. So if the person get into my shoes, I understand that I may be scared, scared by the differences, scared by the fact that I may lose my job, whatever it is. What Moreno said is that in order to have a true encounter, we have to get into each people's shoes to really enter from the in interior uh, who this person is. For example, at one point after Second World War, Moreno took a group of German and Jewish people in the same group, like here. 
and he put them face to face and then the Jewish people talk about what they went through and the suffering and all that and the German some of them said well you know that was right to do it or some of them felt ashamed or whatever it is and at one point he asked a German person to enter to become a Jewish person temporarily on this on the in a psychodrama which was more a sociodrama and then ask a Jewish person to become a German so that not to get excuse and say you're wrong or you're right but in your own experience this is what you have been experiencing so for Moreno when he says I am God the creator of the universe and if my if my father exists it's become my son gave birth to my father he is really talking about the fact that we should all the time roll reverse with each other we should all the time get into other people's shoes and vice versa but it's not always possible some people want to do don't want to do that moreno says when he was students at university there was a time around 1912, 1913, where there was a group of students that were fighting against each other. There's some were really young Nazi fascists, and then there was a communist, and there was this big war between the group. And Moreno said, I'm from a third group, which was existentialism, humanism. And he said, at one point, I tried to get these people to listen to each other with more or less success. Because the will for power, the will to be right, the will to conquer the other person is so strong that we may not want to roll reverse. And Moreno said, that day, when I tried to get those two groups together, I finally realized that I cannot start from big community. I have to go back to more individual work and work with an individual within his family or within his couple. But his idea was the same, that we should all role reverse. And his all role reversing brought him all the way to the cosmos. Moreno said, I'm not, you know, and he, 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 he uh, make a, a claim about that, you know, he said, I Individual dynamics, to study individual dynamic is not enough. To study social dynamic is not enough. We have to study cosmos dynamic. That for him, again in this religion, that is quite uh, confusing. But in his way of seeing things is that we were all part of a cosmos and that not only is me or my neighbor or my family or the family of my uh, neighbor that everyone has equal importance in life and that and i think that you probably had part of that in the reading stone are important trees are important animals are important because the cosmos is composed of all that and to protect and develop the cosmos the entire cosmos, for us to have this idea about it, this is what was Moreno's way of seeing encounter. If I walk in the forest, I have to go and encounter. Yesterday I went with a friend at the, uh, at the Moreno grave, and this friend was very sensitive. She took a little, um, how do you call that? The, uh, um, that you put on the burner and you and you eat they come from the trees hazelnuts. what hazelnut. hazelnut and she put some she put some hazelnut on or whatever nuts it was nuts anyway on moreno grave yesterday it, it's a simple gesture but at the same time it's a cosmic gesture in many ways that we're not just attuned to our own self-serving life, but that we are, even for people who died, because for Moreno, nobody died. We all being reborn continuously. In our ADN, we carry the ADN of the whole universe. So that was 
his way of seeing the, uh, the, the, the cosmos. Then in the religion of encounter, there was a second principle. Second principle is that words are not important. For him, he said, until we experience something, we cannot talk about it. For example, for Christine or Sabine, come and sit in Moreno chair. And if they warm up to the role and imagine that, you know, a hundred years ago, here they are in the middle of the city and they're talking to people that they don't know. Then if after they reflect on it and they say, well, you know, it was fun, it was anxiety, there was uh, some anxiety, some, whatever their experience was, they can talk about it after they experience it. So Moreno had this little protocol, and we are all around 1918, 1917, and up to 1925. So he, he, he published in the Diamond different, what he called, protocol. Let me talk about one of them, where he talked about the Godhead as comedian, and where he says, in this play, there is the director of the play, there is then the person who played the role of Zarathustra, so the person as such, and then playing the role of Zarathustra. Then there is the author of the, of the, of the play, and that's in here would be Nietzsche who wrote, Thus Speaks Zarathustra. Then there is the audience who go to the play. But in his play, he also chose the youngest person in the audience and the oldest person in the audience. And then there is Moreno, he, and he has this discussion about the, uh, the comedian. Well, where did he took his idea? Well, in 1911, they were presenting in Vienna a play, Thus Speak Zarathustra. And Moreno, with one of his good friends, Franz Werfel, that many of you may know if you're from the Viennese tradition, who later was the husband of Alma Mahler. So they went to this representation of Thus Speak Zarathustra. And as the curtain opened, and there is Always in Moreno, it seemed that there is always a throne someplace. So there is a throne on which Zarathustra is sitting. And does someone would like to be Zarathustra? Okay, so there is a Zarathustra sitting on, uh, on the stage. The curtain opens, then Moreno, who is in the audience, come on the stage and turn to Zarathustra and ask him, who are you? People in the audience first think that this is part of the play, but it's not part of the play. And so the person says, well, I'm, I'm Zarathustra, and he doesn't know too much. That was not part of, his, of the play line that he learned, that he memorized. And he said, oh, you're Zarathustra. And yeah, the guy said, yes, I'm Zarathustra. Oh, I'm so glad because, you know, I pay so much money to come here, and I was afraid that it was a fake and that you would not be the real Zarathustra. So then Zarathustra started to be shake, shaken a little bit and said, well, I'm playing the role of Zarathustra. And Moreno said, you're playing a role and I paid all that money to hear Zarathustra and you're not, you're just a fake. You're a comedian. And the person finally said, yes. During that time, the director went to call the police. <laughs> and after... He start, continued to talk with the person. The person said, yeah, I'm a comedian. And he said, oh, you're a comedian. That's, that must be fun to be a comedian. He says, yes, but you know, we don't get much pay. And uh, so I have during the day I work in a bakery so that I can because I have a wife and three children. And the man started to talk about himself. 
And then Moreno and Franz Werfel, who were on each side of the chair, say tonight we're witnessing the birth of the new theater. It's much more important to know about the person hiding behind the role and to get to know this person who, like many people in the audience, may be a father or a mother, may have children, may have to work uh, uh, overtime. Now it will be easier, easier in Austria because you can work 12 hours a day. But that you, <laughs> but that you uh, are in the position of knowing the person behind the role. We're witnessing the birth of new theater. And then the police came and both Franz Werfel and Moreno spent the night in jail and had to sign a paper that they would not disrupt the, you know, what's happening. But from that, Moreno after wrote this piece that we find in the diamond. And he said, I could not write about that if I have not experienced it. But then that, that I experience it, I can talk about it. So in the religion of encounter, if we don't learn to get into the other person's shoes from the inside, even if we would talk and make big speech about, oh, yeah, the refugees are like this and like that, and they're poor and blah, blah, blah. If we don't put ourselves in their shoes, change will not occur because it will remain a cognitive process. So the second thing for Moreno was that word don't come first. And because he was somewhat religious, the comment that he made was that at the beginning was action, at the beginning was the relationship, rather than at the beginning was the verb. And when he used this expression, at the beginning was action, at the beginning was the relationship, he opened the door to get people later to be in real experience, like in psychodrama, sociodrama, so that they can experience from the interior, not only their own conflict, but they can become what he will then later term, ego auxiliary, that I can play apart from your own life if I am in a real, real warm-up situation, and if I accept to be you, which, which is a rule in psychodrama, people don't necessarily have to accept, but if I do, I am committed to become you or whoever role that I'm being asked to play, your father, your mother, your friend, your child, but I'm committed to that, and that when I'm committed to that and I became an auxiliary ego, this means that I understood that first action was important. And then I can walk back and look at to how I took the role of Moreno or the role of whoever I play Zaratustra and say, here is my experience. I can talk about it because I've been sitting in that chair, because I know from the interior what, it's, what it is all about. So in the diamond, Moreno talks about these protocols. There's another one about, you know, the Godhead as, uh, as an author and as a preacher. And the one as a preacher is also a little bit the same way than it, it was with the comedian, because Moreno stepped in in the cathedral not far away from here, the San Stephen Cathedral on Easter day when the bishop all dressed in gold and with his uh, whatever, his big gold cane. And he stepped in the church while the, the bishop was talking about love, charity, and all that. And Moreno yelled and screamed at him. And he said, you know, those are only words. Please cross the canal, go into the second district, go and see the poor people, go and see people who don't eat three times a day and take your gold and sell it. Because a true person who roll reverse with poor people will not dress himself in gold, will not talk about charity or, you know, uh, love. 
And then he, he come to make, if you look at his autobiography, he make a lot of comment about all organization that Moreno dealt with. The church, politics, theater, school, he named all of them in his autobiography. He said, every time that I would enter that, I would get sick, I would get angry, I would get to be confronting. Because the real intention behind politics, behind religion, behind uh, 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 treating people in school, developing children in school, or about family, have been turned around by adults. And they don't make sense anymore. People are using all these organizations for their own self-service. Not to be able to, in democracy, if we elect people, they're our temporary alter ego. We don't want them to be there forever. We put them for a period of time where they represent us. So they cannot come around and talk as if they're dictator. We put them there. But what happened in politics? People don't want to lose their seat, so they start to make compromise and they start to play around so to make sure that next election around they would be elected. Moreno said the same thing about the school. He worked a lot with little children. And and um, since I'm from Canada, I will tell you one of his story, one of my favorite story about that. So he had all these. It's about translation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's okay. Good. Okay. So Moreno used to go in the out garden. You know, I may my my. Uh, my pronunciation may be wrong, but you may where the out garden is in Vienna. Oh, what? Oh, yeah, you're right. So he used to go there and walk and tell story to children, and then children would get around him, because Moreno believed that the most important people on earth are first children, and because of his uh, way of seeing life. He, he liked to quote the American poet Wiltman, who would say, children are a yes, a yes, a yes, a yes. This is a poem by Wilt Whitman, in which he says that children, when they come, they're in a state of spontaneity. If it's too warm or if they, uh, they don't feel comfortable in their clothes, they will cry. They will not ask permission to cry. They, they're uneasy, they'll cry. If they're hungry, they may yell and scream if we leave them doing their own thing. Children are spontaneity. So he was telling the story to the kids. And um, one afternoon, they were, you know, they had these big tree with branches and he would sit there and the kids would sit around and then he may go one branch up and the kids would follow him. And he came and he said, uh, you know, what's your surname? And the person said, Florence. Hmm. Wow. Where does that come from? Well, my mom or my dad loved the name and gave it to me. Okay. What's your name? Matthias. Where does that come from? Well, you know, my, my cousin who, whose child died at one point and who was called Matthias, my parents decided to have a replacement child, so they gave me that name. And he went all around the name. And he said, what I'm hearing is that you didn't choose your name. I understand that we don't choose our family name because this is how we are part of a clan. But our name, whatever it is, is what distinguishes distingu us from the rest of the family. Like I come from a family of 14 children. My name is René. There is only one René in the family, but we're 14 Marino. <laughs> but there is one René 
and that's defined in many ways my own identity. So Moreno was telling the kids, I don't understand that you cannot choose your name. And then he said, you know, in Canada, this is the link, with the, he said, you know, the people, the, the uh, people in Canada and in one of the, uh, of the tribes, uh, when people get to be 10, 11, or 12, when they get into maturation, the clan get together and ask the child, what name would you like to have? And the child chooses his name. Like this one who is very good with the, who can take, you know, and send uh, a projectile right on the, the, the axe, right in the middle of the tree. They may say, you know, I want to be called the right one. The other one who is a little bit poetic and at night, instead of going to sleep, look at the star and the moon, may say, I would like to be called, you know, uh, poussière de lune, you know, uh, moon ashes. And kids come with that, and then the rest of the clan look at the kid and say, yeah, that's a good definition of your own identity, so you could have that name. So Moreno was telling that story, and then the kids went back home, and mom called Florence for dinner, and she didn't come. Hey, Florence, dinner is ready. No, she didn't come. So she went in the room and she said, you know, Florence come for dinner. I said, who is Florence? I'm not Florence anymore. And the kids, after Moreno left, have chosen their own name. You know that. And that story, which I think is, is a metaphor of his philosophy, is very important about how we define our own self-identity. This is part for Moreno of the creativity. If we are creative, we are the one who define our life. And then the second pillar, which is, if I am attuned to other people, then there is a relationship. So if you look at the poster, that may just look like a poster and it's okay. And by the way, I think a few are made if some people want to bring one home and make a donation to the, uh, to, to the association, I think there will be some on the table. So there is two lines on the side of the poster, two golden lines. One is for creativity, the other one is for encounter. And for Moreno, those were the two pillars of what he called the religion of encounter. That not only do we need to roll reverse with the other person, but we need not to lose our identity. If we lose our identity, we cannot be creative. So it's this mixture of both creativity and encounter that makes for Moreno philosophy. And if you go back to the diamond during this period and you, le you read all the article, like there is another one about the philosophy of the moment. Well, Moreno was an existentialist, and he was also one of his mentor was uh, Buddha, and Buddha wrote about philosophy of the moment, uh, wrote about the necessity consciousness, full consciousness, which is a word that comes back today in, in psychology, which is called mindfulness. Well, all that came from the the Eastern religion, and Moreno internalized that from Buddha. The other part that he internalized, his other mentor, was Jesus Christ. It's interesting because he was from a Sephardic family, but his mother was raised in a Catholic convent in Romania. And she almost converted, but she was very proud of Jesus. And she would talk about Jesus all the time when Moreno was a little kid. So he internalized also some of the uh, uh, value linked to uh, Jesus, but not to the Catholic religion, to the person of Jesus who was going around, taking care of the people, be, be attending other people. So all these different little pieces that I'm presenting are part of Moreno philosophy. And you can, if you read the diamond,
but with a greater perspective. If you just look, for example, at the word of the Father, you will say this stick doesn't make sense. This man was completely out of you know, touch with reality. But if you start looking at them, then you will see that there is a coherence within what Moreno was presenting. Then he moved to United States, and I want to just take a, a few minutes to go away from uh, the, the diamond. In, in 1925, so he published many texts in the diamond, and if you're interested, you could go either, either at the National Library and look at these texts. Um, in 1925, for all kinds of different reasons, he moved to United States. He even says that he needs to, um, uh, with his friend, to choose a place where they would go. So they decided to go to the United States, and one of the first things that he did, he recorded this word of the Father. And he even presented it at CBS, which was a big radio station at that time, and he would say, I am God, the Father of the universe, and you know was very impressive, but for a psychiatrist talking like that, there was no future business. So he learned, uh, he, he learned very rapidly that he had to translate his work in a different way. So he did a research in a prison, prison Sing Sing, and when he did this research, he found out that there is an order in relationship. Relationships are not just a matter of, uh, of chance. If people relate with each other, oh, I like you, and the other person may not like me, so it's a one-way street. Or it might be a two-way street. I like you, I like you too. Or I may be completely isolated. Nobody talks to me and I'm in a corner and I live a miserable life because I'm an isolated. Or I may be a star. If you're in school and the professor says, we'll make a, uh, a together, we will make a, a duty. So you get into groups. And there are some people who all want to be with this person because this person is a star. Everybody likes him or her. And some who are isolated, nobody wants to be with them. Moreno said there is an order and there is a science that will help us discover the, the nature of relationship. And he called that sociometry. That now we can look at all the relationship and not only individual, look at the relationship within a, in a nation. A nation with another nation. There are some nations that just love each other. There are some nations that for centuries don't want anything to do with another nation. Well, Moreno said on individual, couples, social, family, community, you can design a chart of relationship and then know about how this community or this family work because if there is a lot of bilateral relationship people will be happy but in a family if you have a black sheep someone who is isolated you get problem if in a family you have somebody who is a star and nobody else can have a space because this person occupy all the space there will be problem so when he developed sociometry through his research at the prison, he came out not only with a diagnosis, how to assess relationship, but then the second thing is how to cure relationship. And in order to cure relationship, then he invented another word, who was sociatry. He chose this word in opposition to psychiatry. Moreno didn't like the word psychiatry. He felt that it was just uh, uh, focusing on mental illness and that a lot of people who, in quote, are mentally ill, it's because we don't understand the sociometry of the family. 
somebody will, for example, uh, try to kill themselves. And they go to the hospital for two days, and after two days with medication, we send them back in the house. We forget that it's not the person of suicide itself, it's a system that suicide itself. And that the person who take her life is part of a larger system. So Moreno understood that and said, we need to develop a new science where we will start working on relationship. Relationship that are good for everyone, because for Moreno, we don't leave people aside. We don't leave people behind. So then he had two new pillar, and if you look at the, at the, at the poster that we made, there is also two lines that also take together the two gold line, and those two additional lines are for sociometry and soci sociatry. So when he moved to United States, Moreno became much more in quote, acceptable because it changes vocabulary. But not only did he change his vocabulary, but he changed his way of looking at science. And this is where he came to say in 1969, science is not enough to change the world, but religion either is not enough to change the world. And what he really meant is that behind every scientific approach, there is a philosophy of life. I do that with my students at university when we, when we uh, do epistemology of uh, the uh, 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 psychotherapy. And I ask them to choose moment in their life, whatever, when they're two, three, four, five, and then I asked them, the first day I went to school and I cry my eyes out and, you know, my mom just turned around and went. And it, it was very traumatic for me. And I said, what do you derive today, 30 years after, in your own life? Well, it's important that if we choose a new path, that we don't push people in it, but that we attend to them and we stay with them into this rite of passage. Then, you know, when I was young, my dad helped me with mathematics, and my dad was very, very precise and all that. And I became a scientist. So in every small moment of our life, without knowing it, we are choosing our future. And we are choosing our future because in the science of sociatry, nothing uh, is something that is uh, unusual. Everything can be predicted if we go and look at it deeply. So when he came to United States, Moreno finally bridged his philosophy. But if we come back to the period of the diamond, he was still far away from that. But he said something very important. More important than the creation is the process by which we create. And that no one of us is today who we were yesterday, and we will not be tomorrow who we are today, because life is a process. So instead of looking at the final product, let's center on the relationship and to see how the creator, whatever he is, all of us, what is our process for going from point A to B and then for Moreno during that period. As I said, I could go for people's ask, how long will you speak? And I said, I can speak for six days, but I'll try to resume it into one hour. But so I wanted you to, to see what was Moreno legacy. And I will come back here just to somewhat uh, conclude. So one of the conclusions that Moreno made about that period is that very early in my life, in my career, I came to the position 
that there is another area, a larger world beyond the psychodynamic and the sociodynamic of human society, the cosmodynamic. Man is a cosmic man, not only a social man or an individual man. When I first said this, that was in 1918, a hundred years ago, about it sounded a little bit like a highly exaggerated mysticism. <clears throat> Today, it's almost common sense. Man is a cosmic being. So that's one of his conclusion, and he said that in 1969. And even today, when we look at the, the cosmos and the environment, and you know, there is no limit to the infinite smallness and infinite greatness. We can see that we are not just you know, there as little individual people, but that we participate into something greater. So, in conclusion, in relation to the daimon, I want to bring the following conclusion. We need to come back to an holistic approach that integrates the singular individual all the way to couples, family, communities, nation, and the whole cosmos. Moreno envisioned such an approach, but did not implement it as such. And there was good reason for that. He, even though he was somewhat of a genius, he didn't work too well with other people. So he was still uh, quite a, lo a loner in many ways. But the intent is to find ways to magnify the well-being of everyone and all of the cosmos. And this is a quote for Moreno from the, uh, his book, Who Shall Survive? A truly therapeutic procedure cannot have less an objective than the whole of mankind. So we might be doing some individual therapy. We might be doing some philosophical reflection. But our basic intention should have the origin of the cosmos and not only our little place, even though this is where we will put our work. I also agree with Moreno that we need to integrate science and religion. However, in, losing, in using the last term, religion, we need not to confuse religion with specific faith. For Moreno, the word religion was mainly associated with meaningful encounter with other fellow human being and being in harmony with the entire nature and the cosmos. In my own view, instead of the word religion, I would word it differently. A philosophical approach to life based on humanistic and existential set of value. So I believe that an integrated set of value that enhance relationship, facilitating an integrated development of the entire planet and beyond, are required and are the postulate on which we can establish a science whose intent is the preservation of the cosmos and an equal treatment of all human beings. Third, sociometry needs to be developed in every field and aspect of relationship. In that sense, Moreno was right to call for an army of sociometrists. However, sociometrists need to be more than observer of reality. They need to be clinical psychosociological psycho expert. They need to be in action. They need to get into action. To identify and understand problem is not sufficient. They need to look at relationship in the light of a clear intent, namely the well-being of all from individual to the entire cosmos. To do so, we need the collaboration of every professional branch. And this is why I was so happy and we talked uh, uh, with Manfred about that, to have this meeting here where we're not only talking about psychology, but tomorrow we'll talk about philosophy, we'll talk about uh, poetry, we will talk about literature. We need everyone to, be, to get together in order to get to the point where we want to go. This is where sociatry comes to play. Moreno envisioned a science 
of individual and group well-being. Sociatry, a sense of opposite to psychiatry, foster relationship with self and other that lead everyone to fulfillment. In my own term, intersubjective meaningful relationship should be based on mutual development and satisfaction. In order to reach a point, true encounter are the rule. Genuine encounter facilitate creativity and vice versa. From this basic philosophy come the strategies. This is here and only here that we bring the Moreno tools, axiodrama, sociodrama, psychodrama, cosmodrama. This is how we find the way that Moreno envisioned for a better world, challenge and change, action-oriented method and the use of the stage in psychodrama and sociodrama, favoring self-creativity and genuine encounter, perfecting our diverse role in an integrating way as clinical, psychosociological educator or therapist. This is here that we offer temporary shelter to all refugee and we are all refugee in our own life at one point or another. This is where we offer temporary shelter to all refugees and people of goodwill so that they can move into a more receptive environment. In order to achieve such a program, we need to unite behind a vision and a project that put in the foreground the fulfillment of everyone, being individual, couple, family, community, or nation, in one word, the old cosmos. We need to develop worldwide cooperation, regardless of faith, races, cultural background, and other differences. We need to look beyond similarity and frontier to embrace a view that make room for all individual and social differences. A world that embraces such a vision cannot withdraw into oneself, propose a narrow understanding of the universe. And the question is, can we meet the challenge? Thank you. We may have still 10 minutes if there is any comment or question that you would like to make because I think we put 9 o'clock as a... Yeah, so if anyone has comment, and please if you want you can come here and take the stage, you know, it belongs to everyone. Or if you have question about, you know, we touch very superficially. Yeah. Okay. No question, no comment, but we will continue tomorrow. We have all day tomorrow to continue that. So thank you very much and hope to see you all tomorrow for there will be different presentation. There is program outside for those who will not have it. And as I said, if some people want to bring a, a, a poster from the association, I think there's some outside on the table. Sleep well, sleep tight, dream. Moreno, when asked what was the difference between Freud and him, when he met him, he said, Dr. Freud, you interpret the dream. I invite people to dream again, so I invite you to dream again. <laughs>